So here I am in my Confucianism tie, but talking about William James, and specifically about William James's book, The Will to Believe and Other Essays in Popular Philosophy. Now, the book is named for The Will to Believe, the essay, and I need to at some point do a video for the great text playlist on The Will to Believe, the essay, James' most famous piece. This is The Will to Believe, the book which includes the essay, but includes rather a lot more. And I'm holding here my own <laughs> well-used edition um, fixed up with a lot of tape, and it's by uh, it's published by Dover, which is a fine edition. It's a beautiful little volume. There may be any number of volumes available on uh, in bookstores and online booksellers. The book is public domain. You can find the complete text on the internet, Gutenberg.org. You may find a very nice audio version of it somewhere. Check LibriVox, which is free, and I have no idea what other resources there might be. It is a wonderful book on James' philosophy of religion. Not that pointing out that it's a wonderful book in philosophy of religion from William James, not that this does justice to the book. There's a lot here. It's difficult to know how exactly I should summarize it. Philosophy of religion is um, as good a three-word phrase in summary of this excellent book I, I could probably come up with. Perhaps the best one-sentence summary would be, this is a pragmatic defense of the rationality of religious belief. Now, the will to believe the essay, as is fairly well known, is a practical defense, a pragmatic defense of the rationality of religious belief in the absence of convincing evidence. The pragmatic defense, it's not focused on evidence that God exists. That's not the kind of argument defending the rationality of faith William James is likely to make, although he may do it if he can accumulate enough evidence and on that topic see other books by William James, in particular in the varieties of religious experience and the conclusions he draws from the accumulated evidence towards the end of that particular book. But in this book he's not, he hasn't gotten that far. In this book he's dealing with the rationality of belief if we don't have convincing evidence yet. And he thinks we have the right to decide for ourselves whether we are going to have religious belief, to take the risk of being wrong about it and believe anyway because of the possible practical benefits of being right because we have the right to weigh that risk for ourselves and risk being wrong because if we are right there are benefits to religious belief. That's uh, roughly the sort of thing you find in the first essay of the book, The Will to Believe. However, there's a lot more than just that. This book is about the will to believe. It is about the question, is life worth living? Um, James <laughs> argues against suicide. James argues life is worth living. It's about the importance of individuals. That's the, another essay title. Is life worth living? The will to believe the importance of individuals. The importance of individuals uh, as still having an effect. Individual decisions still matters. It's not just in contemporary terms, the, the arc of history moving forward. There's also the decisions of individuals. They do make a difference in the world. Real free choice makes a difference. And this is in large part a critique of Hegelianism, another thing you find in this book. There's also The Moral Philosopher and The Moral Life, uh, a beautiful, very intriguing essay, uh, which happens to be James' only uh, direct and obvious engagement with ethics, although I would certainly not say that he's not dealing with ethics. He's dealing with the ethics of belief in the will to believe. He's dealing with ethics all over the place. The, the ethical um, uh, expression, the ethical consequences of religious belief in the varieties of religious experience, but the moral philosopher and the moral life in this particular book is James' only direct exploration of ethics. In general, the book expands on the rationality of uh, the propriety, the usefulness of what James calls radical empiricism. And probably a short summary of radical empiricism at this phase of James' career would be the best introduction to this book. The preface to the book is perhaps the best introduction to the book, better than I could do myself. He says, among other things, the first four essays are largely concerned with defending the legitimacy of religious faith. And he notes that in a different context, he might emphasize that what we really need, what mankind at large most lacks, is criticism and caution, not faith. But he's arguing to people who are well aware of the importance of criticism and caution and not nearly well aware enough of the importance of faith. He's dealing with academics 
to a very large extent. If I were addressing, he says, were I addressing the Salvation Army or a miscellaneous popular crowd, it would be a misuse of opportunity to preach the liberty of believing, as I have in these pages preached it. But here he preaches the liberty of believing because he's dealing with skeptical academics. The, uh, the uh, preface elaborates, I do not think anyone can accuse me of preaching reckless faith. I have preached the right of the individual to indulge his personal faith at his personal risk. That's a large part of what this book is about. But let's get to the radical empiricism. This is an important concept in William James. And for a proper understanding of the matter, you really want to get an overview of how he goes over, how he develops his radical empiricism from uh, this text on to his later writings. And I cover this in a recent article where I compare and contrast James with um, this other guy, um, Alam Iqbal, uh, Islamic philosopher who read James. Radical empiricism, now taking this from the preface to The Will to Believe. So now let's rewind and look at the first paragraph of the preface. James explains that he has put these essays together in one book because they shed light upon each other and because taken together they express a tolerably definite philosophical attitude in a very untechnical way. These essays put together express a particular philosophical attitude, and then James says we could call this attitude radical empiricism. And he elaborates saying that it's empirical because its most assured conclusions, the, the conclusions James is most confident of in this book, he takes as hypotheses to be tested in future experience. Every conclusion he makes in this book is um, subject to revision in the light of future experience. Everything is to be taken as a hypothesis to be tested in future experience. And he says it is a radical empiricism because it refuses to do what some philosophers do, which is they take a particular theory about reality that explains everything, unifies all reality under a single, uh, under a single view, under a single analysis, and insists that all experience has to square with that theory. No, it will take its own theory about reality as a hypothesis to be tested. And that theory is also drawn from experience. The world as we encounter it, reality as we experience it, does not actually appear to be uh, a single unified whole, one thing. It actually appears to be a lot of different things. Reality appears to be a plurality, not a unity. Reality appears to be pluralistic and not unified into a single whole. Let me read a passage from the preface, which is perhaps the best summary of this book there is. There is no possible point of view from which the world can appear an absolutely single fact. Real possibilities, real indeterminations, real beginnings, real ends, real evil, real crises, catastrophes and escapes, a real God and a real moral life, just as common sense conceives these things, may remain in empiricism as conceptions which that philosophy gives up the attempt either to overcome or to reinterpret in monistic form. We experience the world, we experience reality as involving lots of different things, including real possibilities, indeterminations, beginnings, ends, evil, crises, catastrophes, escapes, God, and moral life. We encounter reality as including all of these different things, all of these individuals, all of these religious beliefs, all of these religious lives, all of these moral perspectives, all of these experiences, the human race, and not just as a whole, but its individuals undergo. We experience reality such that all of these different things appear to be real. And James takes as his hypothesis the theory that they actually are real and that we are not likely to find and probably don't even need a single theory which will resolve everything into a single, uh, single monistic form. That's the idea of the will to believe and other essays in popular philosophy. This book is strongly recommended reading for anyone interested in pragmatism, anyone interested in philosophy of religion, and I would suggest uh, if you have no particular interest in reading about the dilemma of determinism or on some Hegelisms or reflex action in theism, though perhaps you are very interested in those matters, uh, at least 
find the book, study The Will to Believe, and a few other essays in here that may seem the most interesting to you. It's uh, divided nicely into bite-sized pieces, and not everyone has to read uh, the whole book. You can read complete portions of the book uh, in the individual essays. Thanks for watching.